CBS has a new mini-series about George Washington coming up April 8th, 10th, and 11th, eight hours long. Many heavies in the cast, including this fella. He's, li he's light for a heavy. <laughs> Steve Macht. That's it. We got it. it. And he's playing bad guy. He's playing it's Benedict Arnold. I understand that when you read for the role of Benedict Arnold, you read so brilliantly that they <laughs> gave the part to somebody else. Yes, yes. <laughs> I got ready to do this thing. I went in there. Actually, it's a funny story. I went in and I got to meet first Buzz Kulik and the writer, Richard Fielder. And I went in and they said, and Buzz, whom I've auditioned time and again for, said to me, Stephen, listen, take the part of George Washington home, read for it and come back. And I said, Buzz, let's cut right through this. You're not going to cast me as George Washington. I'm not big enough. I look like him, but you're not going <laughs> to cast me. And you don't have wooden teeth, though. Right. And he said, well, uh, take it home and read anyway. I said, I've already read it. I read 900 pages, and there are five characters that I can play. And he said, which are those? And I named him, and I said, and Benedict Arnold. Richard Fielder said, Benedict Arnold. So I went home, auditioned. He said, I was brilliant. They said, I was brilliant. I called the agent. The agent said, you were brilliant. However, they offered it to another actor. <laughs> <laughs> they offered it to him. He turned it down. I got it. But Powers Booth, listen, yes. you're in good company. Did you see him as Jim Jones in yes, uh, the I Guyana did. tragedy? Yes. And uh, didn't he also play Evita's husband, uh, Peron? Peron. Did he? Peron. Oh, he's wonderful. I know. So I you know. should feel very good. What were the, uh, listen, no, what were the other My four? It's a better than Powers Booth's credits. Are they? Yes. And much deeper. <laughs> and much more sincere. You only have seen. And it. sweller. You said it. Stephen, yes. what, uh, what are the other four roles you thought that you could do in this? I thought I could do George Mason, and Richard Kiley played that. Oh, yeah. Because he was the, one of the founding fathers, an intellect. I thought mm -hmm. I could play Samuel Adams, who was an intellectual zealot. Really, his story has not been told well at all. Mm -hmm. And I thought I could play Alexander Hamilton, except he was cast by an, uh, by an actor <laughs> 24 years old. So. Did you really read the whole script before you started? Absolutely. Absolutely. Is Very that important. imperative? For me, yes. To know, to know everything about that script as much as I can know and to really know, not only did I re read the whole script, I did a lot of research on Arnold before I went in so that when I went in there, I would really be cooking and they would see a performance that would say, look, Arnold is in this miniseries along with a lot of the other cameos for maybe about eight minutes, mm -hmm. ten minutes most out of all those eight hours. However, there's a slice of life and a portrait that has to be presented that gives you as in-depth choice as I can make every moment I'm on. And that is one of the responsibilities that I take as an actor. Is there a line that Benedict Arnold has? Like, you know, everybody else has got a line. I only have one life to give to my country. No, there's Don't no shoot till you see the whites of their no, eyes. There's or no is there line, anything There's no line really that is said. However, there was a motto that he did use in his whole life and that was glory above all else and by the end of his life when he was living in England a man without a country and hated by most of the major governments of the world France included he wrote in his diary last entry nothing but despair now that's a man who was a military hero halfway through his career here in the colonial period as well he was an attack ferocious attack general and a favorite of George Washington hmm. Yeah. What does your costume look like? Uh, Are you swell? Yes. Yes. Did you have a picture here that we could show somebody? Yes. Wonderful uh, tan outlined, but military blue and lots of buttons and a nice frock opening of the shirt with uh, um, a tie, kind of a black velvet thing coming out here. Very presentable. I've asked my aides to leave us alone so that you may talk freely. I don't think it's wise to discuss General Gates in their presence. My God, it galls me beyond measure. That jackass trumpets himself as a great victor. The man never got close enough to the battle to smell gunpowder. I understand your bitterness, but, but I must forget all that. Yes, you must. To you, sir. To our cause. I know what you have to endure, my friend, to be relieved of your command by General Gates and then to return and lead the attack. You saw your duty and you did it. And I'm proud of you. I like to think it is what you would have done, sir. Your leg, I had no idea you were so seriously wounded. Well, 
the very least, I shall be able to tell when bad weather is in prospect. <laughs> I didn't come to beg sympathy, sir. But to offer my services once more to my commander-in-chief. But once we get you well enough, you shall have a post worthy of a major general. Forgive me, sir. Hmm. Marquis de Lafayette and Colonel Lawrence have returned from Congress and would speak with you. Yes, warm yourself, General. Do you know why they had all those buttons on there? Especially on the sleeves? Wait a minute, was that? Somebody said that happened about campaigns? No, what are the, what was it? During the American Revolution, when they sent the British Army over here in their wonderful costumes, and yes. they'd stand around in their militaristic looking, yes. but it was cold over That's here, right. and their nose the would run. Over. You know what they were doing? They were wiping their nose on their sleeve, and they were <laughs> wrecking the outfits. That's why they put the buttons on the sleeve, to prevent people from That's doing that. I, I should have known that. There is that. a reason for everything <laughs> under the sun. You were in the Amelia Earhart story. Yes, I was. Personally, yes. what do you think really happened to Amelia? I think, I, uh, the research that I did and, and Susan Clark told me, I think she was shot down by the Japanese. You really believe yeah. that? Do you have a, another reading yes. of history? What no, I, well, I, I think that she, there was only one fueling stop, yes. and that was Howland Island. Yes. It was cloudy, and the radio navigation in those days, you know, was nowhere as sophisticated as it is today. I think she just got off course and ran mm. out of gas. And flew into the ocean. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Could be. Could be. Maybe she's living somewhere with uh, one of her lovers that she had. Well, it's, that's much more romantic. She was really a racy yes. gal. And you were also in the Caribbean mystery. Yes, amongst that was one of the more the, recent things. With uh, uh, Miss Marple, wonderful Helen Hayes. Helen Hayes. Yes, how, yes. how is she to work with she considering her wonderful. age? She is one of a little story about her. I think as people, you know, 82-year-old people or actors, uh, and along with Maurice Evans, who is 82 years old, mm. She had a scene which took her maybe about eight takes to do because some of the lines came uh, and went. Yeah. And then after uh, getting it absolutely word perfect, she looked us straight in the eye and she said, I hope all of you younger people will be as good at 82 years old. Ah. And she's absolutely right. It was wonderful to do that. Yeah. Yeah, good lessons. And you were in Knott's Landing. I was. What happened to you in Knott's Landing? I decided, as Joe Cooper, to go back to New York. I much prefer being in miniseries. You decided. You yes. said, I'm leaving this. Yes, I did. Even though it's become this pretty successful. Yeah. Success is not everything. Y yeah. I have what a else wife is there? and four children that i got to look at every day. Yeah. At any rate, I enjoy doing miniseries stuff. I've done a lot of good work. I starred in a, a miniseries called The Immigrants, mm -hmm. Howard Fast's novel about a, a young uh, shipbuilder. I think that the miniseries form allows, especially a classically trained actor such as myself, to develop character over a lengthy period of time in depth. And when those projects come around, they are enviable jobs to get for any actor worth his salt. And I hope to continue doing that, to doing features, television movies, and I enjoy working like that. May we call you Ben? Benny. <laughs> for Benedict. Be on. It's Benedict Arnold. <laughs> but it is all not despair, because Stephen Mach has been playing it. We'll look forward to seeing you in the series. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good Don't fun. go away. Ten Eleven Morning continues.